Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hey guys, it's me, Elena. Um, today I was going to talk about, uh, well, the sky and clouds because there's been some really strange things going on, but I'm going to start off this little talk with a few words about chaos. Uh, as we are being rent from the three dimensional, third dimensional world or torn away from, what is started to happen and what's going to continue to happen for a while is that we're going to get little pockets or remnants of our old karma coming back to haunt us and we're going to have days that are chaotic and not just like with weather or crazy storms although that will be happening as well the earth is going to shake us off and as the spirit Gaia is residing in the fifth dimension she's got to shake off the remnants of her 3D self as well so there's going to be a lot of chaos and just crazy Netzoid things happening and oh, today for me has been extremely weird I mean not just you know gain a weird phone call or someone showing up at the door weird but I mean really freaking weird all night long I could not sleep at all I finally got to bed about 6.30 in the morning and I tossed and turned for two freaking hours. And then I finally was able to sleep for about 90 minutes. My son had said he was going to go down, just down the street, like six blocks to buy a light for his bicycle so that he could ride at night in the event that he got caught in a, in a thunderstorm and he had to wait it out. He was just going to go buy a light and come home. Not a big deal. Well, a car came from behind, hit him, and it threw him, and he scraped the side of his body for 12 whole feet on the road, and the driver just took off. So my son was hit by a hit-and-run driver. His helmet wasn't completely secure because he was just going six blocks, he knows better, but you know, it's one of those things that happens. His helmet went flying clean across the street. The car that hit him was going about 70 kilometers per hour. So it was a pretty nice clip he was making. Thank God my son's okay. Um, I was you know, trying to sleep. I was in bed when he came home and he said, so, uh, mom, I was just in an accident and he carried his bicycle all the way up the stairs, the three flights of stairs and his helmet and everything. And, um, I just, it was like for like a whole hour, I didn't know what the hell to do. I was just like freaking out of course. And I knew to go to the hospital, but you know, I didn't put makeup on, didn't take shower, nothing. I just, you know, just, but I know what to do. Got the coffee ready to make coffee for myself. And then I didn't even turn on. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? Like, just weird chaos, just complete chaos out of nowhere. Um, and there was a couple men out on the street looking one at one of them is a friend of mine out looking for the guy who came back, by the way, honked at my son, waved to him and took off again. So he returns the scene of the crime and yet does not help him twice in a row. Fuck. I mean, just like crazy stuff, like absolutely nuts this is nuts. Right? So we, Take a taxi. You normally it's three dollars fifty cents. It was two dollars and ten cents. I don't know why it was less than usual. Like the guy, there's like no traffic. I don't know. So we get to the we get to the emergency room of the free hospital here, and we walk in and oh great, there's like thirty people in the waiting room. Oh my god. So 
Because it's only road rash, he doesn't appear to have eternal bleeding. He didn't have any problems with his eyes. I don't think he had a head concussion, you know, so we thought, okay, we'll go to the other side. We go to the other side to wait in the hospital line. It was going to be like two or three hours. They said, no, you have to go to the emergency room. We walk into the emergency room and all 30 of the people got up, silently got up and walked the hell out so that suddenly the only people in the whole emergency room was just my son and I like, what the hell? What? There's like 30 people waiting in line ahead of us. And then suddenly they just get up silently and they just all walk out or it kind of looked like maybe some of them disappeared because we looked out in the parking lot. No one was there. So, uh, we went back to the place where the doctors were. They told us what room to go in. We went into that room and there are three doctors from Europe and speak, you know, German, Spanish, and English. So they had just arrived there like the day before. So we were helped by a doctor from Switzerland and he was very sweet and, he checked my son out. Everything was fine. He said, well, you know, we're just going to clean the, clean the wound and dress it and, you know, go home and rest. And that's it. That was it. And instead of waiting for a couple hours, literally we were in and out in like 10 minutes. I, I've never in my life had this situation and it was so, I mean, I remember even saying before I leave the house, gee, you know, I really hope that um, when we get there, it's not going to take all day. I hope it just is like super fast. I hope it goes by really quick. In fact, before he left in the morning, I had a weird little panic feeling and I never have that feeling. And I started praying hard for him for like 10 or 15 minutes. So I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, we get home and I made him some cereal um, oatmeal you know, with fruit. And then I, I thought for myself, I wanted popcorn. I didn't feel like oatmeal. So I'm going to make, you know, I'm going to have popcorn. I put turmeric in it and that's, um, good for our arthritis and aches and pains in the body takes out inflammation. And I made it exactly how I made it yesterday. When I made it yesterday, this exact recipe, everything was perfect. It was amazing. Within two minutes, the whole thing was a big, gooey, black mess, and my whole house was filled with smoke. I don't know what the hell. Like, it's almost like I hopped timelines, and it looked like I'd been, I'd left it on the, on the stove for like a half hour. And I'd been watching a TV show that I paused. So I went back to where it was when I started the popcorn to the time it was on the show when I, went to check on the popcorn because it wasn't even popping. I didn't hear any popping. Like, what the hell? How come it's not popping? So it was two minutes, only two minutes. And yet the evidence was it looked like I left it on the stove for like an hour, but it was only two minutes. Even the time was the same. It was like two minutes. And the dryer was done, but I had just started it for an hour. So I think I had an hour of missing time, which is pretty disturbing. But what's more disturbing is when I got done cleaning up the popcorn mess, opened all the windows, my whole house smells like the worst form of incense ever, burnt popcorn. I go back and I'm like, you know what? Oh, wait, I had had half a cup of coffee left. Let me just finish my coffee. Maybe I need my coffee. Took a sip of my coffee. It was half whiskey. I haven't had it. I, the last time I had whiskey was a week and a half ago when I put it in my apple pie and the whiskey itself, the alcohol was burned out. It was just the flavor of whiskey in my apple pie. And it's my own personal recipe. If anyone wants it, let me know and I'll, I'll send it to you. But I haven't even seen the bottle of whiskey. I put it back in the cupboard and I haven't even, I haven't even opened it. I'm not a drinker. What the hell happened? How's there whiskey in my coffee? I went to tell my son that. And he said, well, remember this morning when you poured me a cup of coffee and it was really sugary. I'm like, I didn't put any sugar in your coffee. I just poured the coffee. 
I poured the coffee in mine. I poured the coffee in yours. I gave you your coffee. I came back and then put milk and sugar in mine. And I had cleaned his cup. Everything was clean. It was just sugar. It was just coffee and water. Everything was clean. So I don't know what's going on. But today was a really insane, chaotic, I mean, beyond the norm sort of day. Oh, and like even just a few minutes ago, I I hear an ambulance. And I'm like, oh my God. I go to the window to look and it's um, the guy um, in front of our, the store where we shop, right next door to our building. I, I watched the guy as he flagged down the ambulance and the ambulance turned down the wrong street. And the guy's like waving his arms wildly. So he ran around the corner and suddenly the ambulance sound stopped and no one went into the store. And I don't even know what happened there. But that was about two minutes. And then I went back to look at my computer and it had shut itself off. So I don't know. It's just like one of those days, but it's like beyond the norm. Like usually there might be one or two glitches in the matrix, but everything is freaking crazy today. And so I asked my higher guidance and basically um, my spiritual team has told me that, yeah, we're going to have a lot of weird remnants of karma, a lot of bizarre glitches, a lot of weird things like a few days ago, I had a memory of something specific, like a jacket that I used to have. And I had two simultaneous memories that were equally as strong. Like I had one memory that it was yellow, one memory that it was blue. And now that I'm sitting here telling you this, I don't remember the jacket at all. But I do remember that I had, that I had a conflict in my mind of a memory of two different things. And I, I don't know if you guys know what the Mandela effect is, but... We will go into another on another day. I'm certain of it, but I do know that with some of the things in Mandela effect, I have identical memories of both ca- of both cases. Like this is definitely this way, but it was also definitely this way. So it's almost like my consciousness had been transported into another body in another timeline or on another uh, parallel Earth, and. I had my memories with me, with my consciousness. I came into this body, and this body had the memories from before. And so now I have simultaneous memories. If any of you have simultaneous memories, I definitely want to hear from you. Send me a voice message here on anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical. And let me know. I will play it on the air um, because this is freaking crazy. Absolutely crazy stuff going on um I don't know I just uh it's just seriously (laughs) like obviously I am rat rattled by this like wow um and I know this is just the beginning this next year in fact by January 31st all the people who've decided to stay asleep are going to be transported consciously by the end of the year to another planet. And they're not going to know what the hell happened. And then those of us that are awakening and awake by January 31st, that's another thing I heard, but it wasn't from my guidance. So I haven't double checked that one. So, you know, take that one with a grain of salt, but I did hear that, that, uh, by the end of the year, we're all going to be anchored fully in the fifth dimensional world and the thing is about the fifth dimension is you're going to be able to create really rapidly so anything you think anything you know just wild random things can happen in the fifth dimension so maybe that's where I'm feeling that it's utter and complete chaos but maybe this I'm just not used to being in the fifth dimension consciously in a physical body I don't know Anyway, I did want to talk to you now what we're going to go into, um, just some stuff about the sky and the clouds. Um, one of the things in the Mandela effect that I did notice, um, I guess about two months ago, I, uh, was thinking about something I had read in the Quran and, 
um, I turned to Islam in 2012. I converted. Um, it was a spiritual part of my is a part of my spiritual journey, and I'm more spiritual than religious. But I knew for whatever reason I had to be this religion. God wanted me to be this religion, and I'll go into that another day, maybe. But um, we uh, converted my well, my youngest kid and I. We said our shahada and. There were several things in the Quran that made me really want to be a Muslim. And when I went to check these verses out, they did not exist. And I met a Muslim from Egypt online and we were talking about it. And he said, no, it's never said that. I'm like, it definitely did say this because if it had not said this, I would not have converted. It, it, there was a, a verse about how um, if somebody is an atheist, they can still get to heaven on their good deeds. And it talked about how um, whether you're a Jew or a Christian or any religion, as long as you have better good deeds, more good deeds than bad, when you're weighed on the scale of justice at the end of the life, you'll be sent to basically the good place. So... Which makes a lot of sense. Well, now this guy was telling me, no, no, that never happened. It doesn't say that. I'm like, it also said in the Quran to watch out for aftermarket books. Well, all the Muslims that I know read nothing but the aftermarket books. All the books are written after the Quran. And uh, I don't because I listened to the Quran. I read the book, listened to the book. Well, there's other verses in there. And he's my, my friend is saying that there's some verse about monkeys. Monkeys weren't... They're not even in Saudi Arabia. Why would there even be a verse about monkeys? It makes no damn sense. You know, because the book was written in Saudi Arabia. So there was like no sense. It was nonsense, you know, and um, what he was telling me. But what I remember was completely different. And, and there was no. So the Mandela effect has also affected the Bible. It's affected a lot of different things. Um half the people on the planet right now remember that Ed McMahon has always been um, a part of uh, Publishers Clearinghouse sweepstakes and if you call the headquarters right now they will tell you they've never been associated with him. His likeness has never been on any envelope and he has never once delivered a Publishers Clearinghouse sweepstakes envelope to anyone's door ever. So I don't know. Chaos. Chaos. Crazy, crazy crap. But one thing I do remember absolutely clear in the Quran, and it impressed me so much. I was like, wow, this is so cool. Because it's something like what Jesus said. If you have eyes to see and ears to hear, the truth will be made known to you. In the Quran, it says, we will give you signs in the sky, signs in nature, signs all around the earth will be made available to those with eyes to see and those with ears to hear. Now, I can't find this, this, this verse at all in the Quran, but this is what I remember. Because right after I said my Shahada, I was driving down the freeway and in the sky, the clouds had a whisper of, it looked like Arabic writing. Well, okay, sure, I convert to Islam, but I don't speak Arabic to the point of being able to read the letters. So I pulled over to the side of the road on the highway and took pictures of this. And when I showed it to my friend who is from Saudi Arabia, who does speak Arabic, he looked at this and he said, Oh my God, Alina, you've been blessed. It says Allah and it says um, uh, Muhammad. And, and and then said like it said something else. Like they, they had like three names, or I think it said Ali. Yeah. So it said Allah, Muhammad, Ali. Right? And it was like in this really amazing script. And he I mean it was like calligraphy. Arabic 
he was really impressed. I showed it to a few people, two or three people couldn't make it and, you know, head nor tails out of it. And two people could. And I thought, Oh my God, it's like the verse in the Quran that said that it's like in the Bible, Jesus said this. Okay. So I know that it's true that you're going to be made things will be made known to you when you're ready for it. You're listening to this podcast because you're ready for it. People that aren't ready for it won't even be able to hear it. Might not even play. Might not even work out on their phone or on their laptop. See, so it made me really shocked. That really shocked me. Right. I'm like, wow, you know, I'm, I'm a true believer in God outside of all religion, you know, the universe, the one true, the one will, the creator, there's something going on. Might just be the architects of this world. You know, when you start to connect with that higher source, whatever that is. So over the past, I would say three months, I have noticed in the sky. See, I live in Ecuador and I live in the Andes mountains and we live in what is called a cloud forest because there's so many clouds. You can literally sit and watch the clouds all day long. And they're so interesting. Something really weird though happened. And I think I maybe mentioned this yesterday. I know I was thinking about this, uh, on a video I watched on YouTube, there was a heart and it was identical to a picture I had taken. So it's almost like this is part of the a glitch in the matrix where it's going to appear all over the world. It's a heart. And then there's like a jagged line in the middle, like a broken heart, like a cartoon broken heart. And then it breaks apart. It's I, I mean, the picture I took was identical to something I saw online. I was, I was really blown away. Well, I've also noticed that if I ask a question, <laughs> directly to the spirits of the sky. If I say, okay, spirits of the sky, I'm talking to the dragons and the sylphs. Now, people who know about nature spirits, the elements of nature, the the unseen invisible forces, the unseen beings that create the wind are called sylphs. S Y L P H S silks and dragons create the weather. So I have looked on, um, satellite imagery and paused it. And I saw faces of dragons and I've been doing this for a few years. It's really trippy. If you think you're going to find it, you're going to find it. And I don't know if this is like the double slit experiment in quantum physics I don't know if this is quantum mechanics at play when I expect to see something it's there or something there and my mind is open and I see it. Maybe everyone can see it, but not everyone's going to register it. So the days that I've said, I want to talk to you spirits. I want to talk to you dragons. The clouds will form the shape of a dragon. And this has happened consistently like six or seven times over the past three to four months. So I will open up my, um, my curtains and I will lay in my bed and I will watch the clouds and I will ask questions and I'll watch how the clouds form. Sometimes the clouds will part and there will be like nothing in the sky. And then out of nowhere, a wisp will come up and I've had, I've seen clouds where they make the form of a Y for, for yes. I had plans with a friend who said he would be by, like he said, I'll be there in like Thursday. I'm like, okay. And we didn't have a time. And about four in the afternoon, I asked him, I'm like, or I asked God, I'm like, God, can you show me in the clouds what time he's going to be here? Cause we've got to work on my website. And I waited like maybe five minutes and a six appeared in the clouds. And then it was erased. And then it said seven. So he showed up a few minutes after seven o'clock and he said he had been running a little late, planned on being there earlier. And I'm like, you mean around six? He's all, yeah, but then I thought maybe I better come at seven. I mean, this is really, really strange. One day I was just not thinking of anything in particular and the face of, um, 
a wolf showed up. But because I was laying down, the face of the wolf was like a wolf laying down. When I sat upright, it looked like a normal cloud. And I took a picture of it and I blew it up and I turned it sideways. It looks like a wolf and I've shown it to other people. And they said, yeah, that's definitely a wolf. And I've seen a lot of native, um, native faces of local people. And I've seen, um, something that looks kind of like a, a Hana clown from the Southwest in the United States. And it kind of looks like a half, like a jester or a devil mixed with like a clown face with a, a smile. And I've taken pictures of this and a friend of mine um, sent me images from an art gallery where he was looking at some art because he himself is an art director um, in a gallery and he thought this was very interesting and I would like it because we have that passion we have a passion for art so it, what he sent me that people have made was identical to the clouds that I had seen the images in the clouds so I started to think that maybe our minds impress upon the atmosphere and the patterns that we create with our minds are reflected in the clouds. And I've also thought it's a form of communication. If you have eyes to see and ears to hear, it's going to be known unto you. So now when God thinks of something to you, it's forming in the clouds and you can ask the spirit beings, the, the elementals, or you can ask God directly. And I do know that we can affect clouds because Neil Slade S L A D E Neil Slade has done a lot of experimentation with this. He has been on art bell and many like Jeff friends, I believe has had him on the show. Many people have had him on their um, shows over the years, the very famous shows. Not my little podcast show here, but I mean, like Coast to Coast AM, you know, Neil Slade has written many books. You could go on Amazon and buy his books. And he has um, talked at length publicly on cloud busting, where we use our minds. If we see a cloud and we want to bust through it, we push our amygdalas forward the almond shaped part of our brain that's is located just above our ears about half inch and in the very center of our brain um is where you focus and then it's on either side of the center so it's kind of like um two almonds just on the other side of our ear but it's about an inch in and a half inch higher than our ear, I guess is what he said. So if you imagine that that's like a little switch and you switch it forward like a light switch, you're turning your brain on. Another way you could do it is if you smell something strong that's wonderful, like a rose or coffee or chocolate or vanilla, you know, like a flavor that makes you happy, that switches that amygdala forward. And when it's switched forward, you can bust a hole in any cloud and break it up. So if you don't like the weather, you can change it with your mind. And this has been proven scientifically over and over and over again. Also, if you want to create a cloud, same thing. You just imagine it's growing and getting bigger. And I think you can make shapes with your mind. And what I think is happening as we're going into the fifth dimension, clouds have gotten really strange. On Secure Team 10 channel on YouTube, he has several episodes where clouds are shaped like squares or there's a square. It's like someone took a giant square shaped cookie cutter and punched a square shaped hole in the clouds like a window. And there's uh, cloud formations. It's just at a complete diagonal, like someone forgot to complete the sky so there's glitches in the matrix left and right. And this is, it's just gotten weirder and weirder folks. And I've been thinking about it and I've been observing it. I hesitated on whether I should even bring it up because I know I'm going to sound like a crazy person, but there are other people that have talked about this stuff and not exactly to the extent at which 
I have. One day I was wondering, I was laying here in my room, pondering things, meditating and pondering. And I was wondering if my genetic code contains the genetic code of extraterrestrials. And I was wondering if that's not true for all of us, that maybe we're not a hundred percent from earth. And I do know that we contain in our bodies, the genetic code for every animal on the planet, including human. And that's been scientifically discussed as well. You know, when we're in the womb, we look like, you know, a, a tadpole. And then we look like, you know, like, you know, other animals as we're, as we're growing into a human. I think we look like a lizard at one point. And we do have a triune brain. We've got, you know, the reptilian brain and the mammalian brain. And um, uh, what's the third part? I should know this. I have a degree in psychology and I can't remember the third part. Uh, Maybe it's just the human brain, but it's something. There's another word for it. So we have like the reptile brain, the mammal brain, and then the human brain, which is the upper. Uh, I forgot their name right now. Court. I don't know. I can't remember it. But I do know that we have a triune brain that Neil Slade talks about as well. So I was thinking about the DNA stuff and I opened my eyes and all of the clouds, I kid you not, were were genetic code. It was um, X's and Y's and it looked identical to DNA just laid out like the scientists show under a microscope but it was in the clouds and I was shocked I, I, I mean the clouds shouldn't look like that but they did I wonder if this stuff isn't going to keep happening more and more and more as we get deeper into the fifth dimensional world I know that memories are being affected. I know the magnetosphere of the planet has been affected lately. I know the Schumann resonance is soaring. Um, I don't know. It's just getting weirder and weirder. I don't know what to make of a lot of it. It is going to be more chaotic, so be on the lookout for that. Go out there and see if you can't bust up some clouds. Go out there and see if you can't with your thoughts affect clouds because as they have said for sages have said for millennia as above so below as below so above and now we're seeing it directly and if we are able to manifest in the clouds the thoughts from our minds what can we manifest here on the ground where we live with our minds. So that's your food for thought for today. And (laughs) with those deep and crazy chaotic thoughts, this is Elena Fox Starks. I am signing off with peace and joy and the high vibes of the Holy Fifth Dimension. See you tomorrow. Bye. Hey, you. Have you ever thought about having your own podcast like me? Was it even a New Year's resolution? For me, it sure was. But as I've been looking into this for months, I was daunted. There's so many questions I had. When I was trying to get this off the ground, I was wondering, how do I record the episode? How do I get it across all the platforms? How do I get my podcast on Apple Podcasts when I don't even have an iPhone? How do I get it onto Spotify and all the other places? How do I get people to listen? And how do I make money from my podcast? How do I edit it? Oh my God, I I had all these questions And I was so confused until I discovered the simple, simple answer is Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. 
Best of all, it's 100% free and it is ridiculously easy to use. And now Anchor can match you with great sponsors too. So you could get paid to podcast. All you need to do is record it. You don't have to go out and look for people to advertise on your show. They help you. So basically what I like about podcasting is I don't have to have a video of myself. You don't know if my hair is dirty or if I'm still in my pajamas or even if I'm wearing makeup. (laughs) Ha ha. And it's so easy. I could do this from the comfort of my own home in my living room using this amazing app right from my cell phone. So easy, right? So if you've always wanted to start your own podcast and make money, by the way, doing it, please go to anchor.fm forward slash start. That is anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters that are already using Anchor. Again, that's anchor.fm forward slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast and I can't wait to favorite you. Woohoo! Let's be bro- let's be broadcast podcast buddies. <laughs> I'll see you there. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you.